the chirps of the sparrows and the sparrows have been with us for more than 10,000 years. They have been with us from the start of the civilization when humans became agriculturists from hunters and gatherers. They have seen the rise and fall of civilizations. And the sparrows were the first bird that children identified when they were small. The chirps was the first sound they could relate to coming out from an animal. And I was no different. I had a wonderful childhood, which was full of birds, which was full of flowers, full of nature in those days. Such abundant was the population of sparrows that they were part of the family. The entire life cycle of a sparrow would get unraveled in front of your own eyes. We never mind, minded in those days, sparrows making a nest on the back of the photo frame or on the top of the cupboards. We never mind them bringing grass and dropping some down. In fact, my grandmother never used to allow to put on the fans because the sparrow would get killed. I had an amazing childhood growing up with birds, animals. So fond was I of seeing all these birds that most of the time in the school library, I opened up all the books which used to have birds, animals. Because in those days, we didn't have discovery or national uh, geographic. I just started growing up. More and more, I got involved into this fascinating world of wildlife. So much involved I was that as I grew young, I got a root shock of my life. The vultures, which were among one of the most common raptor in the world, which were found in millions in India, had catastrophically declined. They had reached a point where the scientists were spectacle whether they would survive the decade or not. This thing shook me to the core. I was speechless. I didn't have any answers. My mind was refusing to accept what the people were saying. So I went back to all the places in my childhood where I had seen a lot of vultures. This municipal clock tower in the city center of Nasik during my childhood full of vultures. But that time I couldn't find any. What made me even more nervous, what made me even more spectacle was that it was not only the vultures that I was not seeing, even I was seeing fewer sparrows. I was seeing fewer other common birds which were present everywhere during my childhood. So I went upon catching hold of every research paper, every report in the country. But what I found out was a scientist, our ornithologist never cared to count the common flora and fauna in our country. However, in UK where they were counting the sparrows and other common birds, there had been a catastrophic decline in UK and mainland Europe. The same thing was happening in India also. The only thing that we didn't do was we never counted our common flora and fauna. That time, I made a promise to myself that what has happened with the vultures what has happened with the other species, I would never let that happen with the sparrows. The sparrow has been with humanity since its start. It is one of the best bio-indicator of the environment in and around us. The same causes which were responsible for the decline of sparrows were also affecting humans. However, we were blind enough not to see those. The conservation of sparrow was even more important because it is one of the most important connection between humanity and nature. And if this breaks, people would not stand up to save the nature. I came from a business family background and I thought that if I had to save sparrows and commit my life towards saving them, I had to convince my family to allow me to leave my dream. It also gave me a thought that if my family believed in what I'm going to do, if my family was convinced that the sparrows had to be conserved, it would be quite easy for me to convince the world. But from the day they were convinced, 
I've never looked back. They have been the rock solid support which has helped me go out and save sparrows. So a boy from Nasik, without having any exposure to the field of conservation, had embarked on a journey to save sparrows. However, when I entered the real field, I entered into the big conservation organizations in the country, I found it was quite different. It had its own biodiversity, but not what I had expected. And I found out that it was totally tree-centric. Either it had to be tigers or threatened. Because there I realized all the name, fame, and money lied here. This was against my thought processes. It was against the fundamentals of ecology because there I was taught that everything from an ant to an elephant is important. And here I could see that there were more tiger wallas than the actual tigers in the, in the country. So I was in a state of shock again, totally blank, didn't knew what to do. However, there was light at the end of the tunnel. I got a wonderful opportunity to work with grassroots level conservationists and organizations across the country. This was through a project with Royal Society for Protection of Bird, a UK-based organization, which is one of the world's most biggest organizations saving birds. I got an opportunity to go to UK, get trained, and this opened up an entire different world. I learned about the different approach of conservation which were quite different from the textbook conservation which was happening back in India. It opened up that to be able to save something, you not only needed to do your work, but you also had to talk with the government agencies, the media. You, have, you need to have a proper funding mechanism in place. So there I learned and I thought that if I want to save sparrows, I would not take a project-based approach. And if I had to commit myself towards the sparrows on a lifelong mission, I need to have a sustainable plan in place. Back in India, when I came back, I realized like the real people who are doing conservation were the grassroots level people. They were the small organizations pressed across the length and breadth of the country. And later on, they would become my true allies in saving sparrows. However, what I didn't have in, on my side was time. The sparrows were declining too fast and I had to give them a life-saving injection. However, such extraordinary situation needed an out-of-box approach. The traditional approach would not work. I realized that too soon because of my lifelong observation of the ecological behavior and the needs of sparrows. The kind of setup that we had in India and the lessons that I had learned in UK. So we decided to form an organization named Nature Forever Society, which would not discriminate between species based whether they are threatened or rare. It would not discriminate between conservationists, uh, whether they are normal citizens. We formed a society with humanity at its core, a society which would be transparent. We designed the Adopt Nest Box and Bird Feeder program in order to give that life-saving injection to sparrows. The program helped us achieve three main goals. To create critical habitat for sparrows, which was de declining across the country, mainly the nesting sites and the food. Because as globalization opened up the country, our lifestyle changed. Traditional architecture gave way to modern ar architecture. We didn't have the nesting sites for sparrows. Food was not easily available. So this addressed this key ecological need of sparrows. What had also broken post-globalization was the emotional connect that we had, as a society had with the sparrows. Our doors and windows were shut for sparrows. So was our culture. We had to re reinstate this emotional bond between the sparrows and humanity once again. At the same time, since we had not taken a project-based approach towards conservation, we required a funding which would be long-term and transparent. We didn't want people to donate money to us. We didn't want checkbook charity. 
what we wanted them to do was to adopt the responsibility of saving sparrows. In the past 10, 12 years, we have been able to create more than 30,000 uh, nesting sites across the country, safe nesting sites for birds, not only sparrows, but manas, parakeets, the birds which were declining in the urban uh, landscapes. We were able to connect, uh, create more than 3.5 lakh sustainable source of food for sparrows, which was critical in re-establishing the emotional connect which was breaking and which would guarantee that the future population of sparrows have a sustainable source of food. However, one of the things that we were able to achieve, we were able to get more than 30,000 sparrow supporters across the country. So when I started, I was alone with my family. Today, we have more than 30,000 families across the world <laughs> helping us save sparrows who have made sparrows a part of their family. These people are a voice of sparrows. What we also wanted to do with sparrows is to raise the profile of sparrows because it was always the tigers and the elephants, the glamorous species which was getting all the attention. So for the first time in the history, the Indian Post released a stamp on sparrows. So common flora getting uh, on the stamp was a big win for us. We worked with the Delhi government and got the sparrow declared as the state bird of Delhi. We worked with a Bombay-based organization in distributing more than 52,000 bird feeders free of charge across the country and the world. We believe that creating 50,000 opportunities for sparrows will help in bringing them back. This helped us get back the emotional connect that we were looking out for. However, now what we wanted was people should commit themselves towards sparrow conservation. Saying, I love sparrow was not enough. We wanted people to say, I'll put food for sparrows. However, we didn't want it to reinforce things on people because our supporters came from all walk of life. They were doctors, engineers policemen, politicians, that other things to look after also. So they, based on the time budget, we calculated that even if someone gives 15 minutes in a week, it will create big effect on the sparrows. The I Love Sparrow campaign reached more than 1 million people across the world. People started committing themselves towards sparrow conservation. Because of this wide reach of audience that we had across the world, we were able to declare 20th March as the World Sparrow Day, which is today spread around more than 50 countries. However, today when I look back, even after 15 years, this is what is our biggest motivation. Even today when someone sends us a photograph of a sparrow's nest being occupied, all sparrows on the feeders, we get the same kind of excitement which was there 15 years back. Because we believe that the sparrows will help humanity conserve nature one day.